there are these signs, maybe little warning lights mm. going off. Um, that like might in be your there. car, right? Yeah. Welcome to the Midweek Motivation Podcast, where we bring practical help for your faith and life. Here's today's episode. I am Gabe Kolstad, and we are talking today about how to get the help you need. I'm joined by Stacy Romanaji. How are you doing, Stacy? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing great. Good. Stacy is a, a qualified mental health professional with Cascadia Health. Yes. Works with uh, children and family team. And um, it's a thrill to have you here because I know you you spend a lot of time helping people. Mm-hmm. And in this series we've been in at Westside with Dragons and Dandelions, we've talked a lot about the battles that we fight. Right. Some giant battles, we call those dragons, you know, mm-hmm. some of those pesky, like persistent battles that are more like a dandelion that right. f- end up filling your lawn, you sure. know. Um, but I'm sure you've seen a lot of people actually go through and receive the help they need. Yeah, it's yep. really exciting to see, you know, be. when they get to the end of it and you can, they they can see the progress that they've made yeah. and the growth that they've um, that they've gone through and right. to get the help, you know, that comes from getting help. Yeah. In the end. But I'm sure you've also seen a lot of people that don't, you know, they maybe they start off mm-hmm. or they, they know they need help, but right. they don't actually follow through. They don't end up with that healing or that breakthrough. That must be hard to watch. It is. And, and you know, sometimes it's hard work. Yeah. And it gets to be a little intimidating, you know, to think, you know, they have to do all this work to get to the end. Right. But, but it's worth it. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about... Uh, for starters, what are the barriers? If you, if you, like, for me, I've I've got stuff that I would love to see a breakthrough in. Sure, um, I'm sure most people do. What do you think are the barriers that that keep us from actually getting the help that we need? Well, I think you know, for a lot of people, they they're afraid to be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. They they don't want to. Um, let people see their weaknesses. Mm-hmm. I think for a lot of times, especially for men, you know, historically we've been told you need to be the strong one, you right. know, you keep your problems to yourself. Don't let people see you cry. And so we've yeah. gotten accustomed to just kind of stuffing everything down and and not wanting to go out and ask for help and try to solve our problems by ourselves. But, you know, that doesn't work. You know, when you stuff it down, you know, it, it either – comes out at one point you just explode or um, you know you never deal with it and mm-hmm. and it's something you carry with you and and um, honestly you know it, it doesn't hurt to ask for help and people want to help and when you ask people for help you know they get joy out of helping you and it, it's kind of a, a win-win situation you get the help you need and the person that's helping you feels good about what they've done and they've been able to help mm-hmm. um, I think also you know, people, they like to help other people, but they don't want, you know, I don't need anybody. Totally. Help. Yeah. You yeah. know, I, I'm happy to help other people, but, you know, I'm not going to let anybody. What do you think is behind that? Uh, pride. Okay. Oh, for sure. <laughs> and, and again, you know, just being afraid to let somebody in and see your, your vulnerabilities. Mm-hmm. You know, I hesitate to call them weaknesses because we all have them, right? We all have True. stuff that we, that we are dealing with mm-hmm. and, and, um, you know, what kind of stuff do you think uh, comes up for people like the, they're watching, they're listening right now, and and you're using words? They're probably having Im- images pop up. What do you, what do you think people are thinking about, or what's your experience with this, with needing help in some of these areas of vulnerability? Sure. Well, I think um, a lot of it is um, uh, trauma from the from the past. Maybe okay. maybe they didn't grow up in a a healthy home yeah. or a loving home, and they got the message that you know they weren't, you know, nobody wanted to help them. They weren't worthy. They weren't loved. They were a problem. Um, you know, don't bother me. And so that would, that would stop anybody Shut from wanting down. to yeah. reach out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe they are emotional. I'm a crier and okay. I remember, you know, I am too actually. Kind of like, what did you ever yeah. get? You know, I'll give you something to cry about. Right. So, <laughs> so then you don't want to cry. And so, um, you know, people don't want to show, show their emotions. And so yeah. they're, they're afraid to, to get to that point. And, and you know, a, a lot of times when you start to talk about your pain and start to talk about the things that you're going through, you do cry. I mean, mm. you know, you, you just can't help it. You've been holding all that, all mm-hmm. of that down and all those emotions just kind of come bubbling up and spilling out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, f- I, as a pastor at a church for a long time, you know, watching and being a part of a lot of people's lives, definitely I, I can... Uh, I agree that there's just there there is just this awkward barrier, and I think maybe part of it is spiritual. Mm-hmm. You know, I know that the enemy doesn't want people to experience breakthrough, and so there's not just maybe a person's self perception or their assumptions about how other people are going to respond, uh, and their fear of 
rejection maybe is at the root of some of that. But I think the enemy's also planting other seeds about how how their problem isn't as big as somebody else's. Mm-hmm. So don't steal all the help, right? Sure, don't, sure. You know, don't take up the person's time because they got bigger problems to worry about or, or something, you know, um, but there's just so many barriers. Or that, that lie that, you know, if you've got Jesus, you're going to have it all together, right? Oh, goodness, and, yeah. you know, if, if you've got Jesus, then you don't have any problems or mm-hmm. you shouldn't have any mm-hmm. problems and, you know, you don't want to. That's a good point. Yeah, which is, I mean, certainly not in the Bible, right. uh, but I, maybe there's a religious kind of expectation that people put on themselves thinking, there's a magic wand that passed over me. I, you know, maybe it didn't work for me. Mm-hmm. Something must not have stuck right. for and, me. And and you, you don't want the outside to see what's going on in, inside, or you know, like mm-hmm. in your home, mm-hmm. or you know what you're dealing with, because you you feel the need to put on this. Um, perf- my family's perfect, or I'm, you know, right. I have no problems. And yeah, and I, I mean, we like uh, one of the things that we always laugh about in my household is that you know we live in this place we've lived in for a long time and everybody in our neighborhood knows that I'm the pastor of this church down mm-hmm. the street and uh sometimes it does there's this little bit of like being afraid to to showcase like the reality of you know just a normal person's life where right. there's arguments and there's messes and you know on and on and uh, I think everybody probably deals with that yeah. a little bit yeah, yeah. Well, okay, so there's reasons why people don't go through and, and ask for help. It requires vulnerability, um, and we gotta we got to speak up. But let's talk a little bit about the signs that somebody does need help. Some help, because sometimes you don't know, yeah. right? Um, you're, you're so busy just trying to get through, through what you need to do mm-hmm. the next day that you're not recognizing things that are happening to you. Like, um, for instance, you may be a little more irritable than you know, n- normal or um, really more emotional than, than you usually are. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, your feelings are maybe f- going haywire. They're just all over the place. And, and you may not be seeing that, but certainly, you know, you, th- those people around you are probably noticing that those emotional changes in you. And yeah. they may even point it out to you. Yeah. Um, your body, you know, stress and and pain does terrible things to your body. And so, you know, you may have headaches or migraines or stomach aches. And, you know, you're just thinking, uh, you know, maybe I ate something tonight. Mm-hmm. But that stomach ache could be caused by all of the, you know, the stuff you're stuffing down and not wow. wanting to deal with and get help with. Your thoughts change when you when you're at a, in a position where you really need to help for you need to ask for help. Um, you know, if you find that you're thinking, you know, maybe the world would be better off if I'm not here. Or you've mm. got some thoughts, suicidal ideation, you know, some thoughts, you know, eh, you know, and maybe dying wouldn't be such a bad thing. I mean, get some help. Um, yeah. Talk to somebody, get some help there. Um, you know, you, your thoughts might be all over the place. You know, when, when you're going through some trauma or, or um, you know, experiences like that, you, you know, your, your brain's not working the way it, yeah. it's supposed to be working. And so your your thoughts will be all mixed up. You'll, you might have trouble focusing mm-hmm. or remembering things, or you may be hyper-focused on one thing. Um, it could be something somebody said to you, or it could be, you know, you're thinking about getting something to maybe help ease your pain, maybe getting... Get going out for a drink, getting a drink, or all you can think about is going home and getting that drink, or um, you know something else that would maybe try to numb, yeah, distract, numb you, yeah, numb. distract mm-hmm. what you're going through there. Hey, just jumping in right in the middle of this podcast episode to tell you about a resource that you need in your life. You know, if you feel ever stuck in your faith, or if you feel like, I want to grow my faith, but I just don't quite know what the steps are, we got a resource for you called Sticky Faith in a Slippery World. I mean, this world is changing, and it's crazy, and we all need something firm to stand on. And I wrote a book for you called Sticky Faith in a Slippery World. You can get your copy right now at the link in the description. I, I got to say, like, the things that you're saying make so much sense to me just because, I mean, we all, I think if if people didn't have this sense uh, f- before a, a few years ago, then all the pressure of the pandemic and recovering mm-hmm. from that, mm-hmm. certainly most people have probably felt some of these things. And like the, I, like the thing about your thoughts being all over the place, like, am I crazy? Like, I, I, I think most people have probably had that feeling sure. like, why yeah. are my, I can't even keep track of my right. own brain and... Uh, and I think that's such an interesting way to look at it is 
there are these signs, maybe little warning lights mm. going off. Um, that like might in be your that. car, right? Yeah, might be that. Could be like the body thing. That's right. so. That's so. And what else would you say would be some signals? Um, well, I think certainly your interaction with other people. Okay. So you, you know, you may um, like try to stay away from family or friends okay. or um, not go to a class that you had been taking or just really try to isolate yourself because yeah. you you know you just don't want to be around people but you've always been a social person but okay. you just don't want to be around people yeah wow so uh, when you are in if you're seeing if somebody's out there and they're, they're like oh gosh you're like reading my mail right now um can you talk to us a little bit about the types of help that we could be thinking about, you know, here we're saying getting help that's a pretty broad thing, but what are we what are we really talking about? Well, I think a good place to start is to get a physical. I mean, it could okay. be, you know, it could just be you've got a vitamin deficiency yeah. or um, you know, you're you're low on iron or you know, there's just something out of whack mm-hmm. that going to see a, a medical doctor, you yeah. know, they might do a physical and and that'll take care of that. Um, you know, reach out to a mental health professional. Mm-hmm. Um, I, there used to be such a stigma about yeah. going and, and seeing a therapist, but I, I don't think that's the case so much anymore. Um, you know, that that's another place where you could go. I, talk to your friends or family or you never know um, who has a, you know, maybe has a similar experience and they're going to be able to let you know that you're not alone, right? Mm-hmm. And um, walk beside you to help you get the help that you that you would need. Yeah. Do you think that people project the response that's going to happen if they ask for help and that this is one of the things that keeps them from actually asking for help? Uh, you know what? I I think that that could be the case. Yeah. You know, I know what they're going to say to me. Right. You know? blah, 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 blah. So I, why even bother? Right. And, yeah. And and what's been your experience watching people ask for help and, and how people then really do actually react when they open up and get vulnerable? Well, I think there's such a release, uh-huh. you know, everything that you've been hiding, you know, you've released and you're allowing yourself to be authentic and, and, um, and vulnerable. And, um, I think you know, you'll find, or, at least in my experience that when I got to that, when I've been in that situation, mm-hmm. um, I find that there's so many other people that have gone through experiences much like mine yeah. and, you know, that, that can help me or, you know, help you, um, know that you're not alone, Mm -hmm. that there's healing at the end of this, Yeah, you know, that you can, you know, get some help and it'll be better in the end. That's really good. I I think, uh, as I, as I even think about this idea of how to find the help you need, one of the things that comes to mind is the, the why behind it all. Uh, we're talking about health. We're talking Mm -hmm. about get healthy is really Mm -hmm. be the best you you could be because, uh, I mean, there's lots of reasons why that's important. I think one is that God made us to live that full life, Mm -hmm. to experience his love and experience great relationships, experience freedom and growth and all of those things. But I also think uh, what motivates me in times like this, even when I've got to go, oh, this is gonna be hard. I got to get vulnerable. I got to ask for some help is I'm thinking about the people who need me to be healthy for them. Sure. And, uh, you know, so it's my family, it's my wife, you know, it's it's my team. Um, and just the idea that uh, I could be somebody who blesses them mm-hmm. um, if I will do the work, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And, and so I think that's a really um, strong reason for me. Sure. And hopefully for all of us, we can think about somebody that needs us to be on our A game you know, and that could be that motivator to get us past the, the discomfort of, am I going to actually go for it and and ask? And, you know, I think the more often you ask for help, uh, the easier it's going to be, number one. And then you, um, you know, you get to see that you're giving somebody else the opportunity to, to bless you and help you. And, and, you know, and therefore you'll be able to do that in return. Yeah. Okay. You mentioned a few places we could go to get Mm -hmm. help, you know, Talk to a, a doctor, great idea. Talk to a, a mental health professional. Talk to friends, family. And I didn't mention um, if you are feeling, you know, so you've got suicidal ideation, mm-hmm. you're thinking about, you know, you'd be better off dead. Call 988, which is a suicide. 988. In, yep. Suicide and crisis line. Okay. And, you know, you can talk to somebody there and they're going to help you get the help. Wow. I don't know if a lot of people know about that. 988. 988. Okay. That's a great tool, great uh, resource. Um, 
okay, I, I've probably messed this up before, just to be straight up. I've I've overshared, I've uh, entrusted really important information to people and it hasn't always stayed sure. <laughs> confidential. You know, maybe in, for me, uh, I've needed some guidelines. What do you what do you think sure. would be some good guidelines for this kind of thing? Well, it comes down to, um, you know, thinking about the amount of access you're going to give somebody to, to what you're going through in mm-hmm. your emotions. Um, and sharing maybe with people, only with people that you know well and know that you can trust. Um, and I think the danger in maybe sharing too much with people that you don't really know is that you may be triggering something in them. You know, um, something you're sharing with them might trigger a past experience for mm. them, which you know they maybe haven't dealt with. Mm-hmm. So it's going to put them back in a position of you know that that pain again, or um, you know it's going to they've kind of moved on from it, but man, it's going to trigger some mm-hmm. some old pain to come back. Um, that's why, you know, going to a, a mental health professional or, you know, a, a physician where you know that it's going to be in confidence, yeah. you know, that they're not yep. going to share what you're going through right. um, with anybody. Good place to start, probably. Yeah, yeah. One thing that w- that I've seen is, uh, you know, with, with being a follower of Jesus, mm-hmm. he calls us into community. And we do find that when people are in community and they, especially if it's, you know, something that they've done for a little bit with the same people, you know, if you've got that like you said, the word trust. Mm-hmm. Um, if you've got trust with people, if you, there's familiarity, there's, you know, you kind of have those me too moments when you're looking across the room and you're like, okay, they get me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes you get that signal that it's safe to share with somebody. I think that can be really helpful. Sure. And that's why community matters so much right. is that you do, there are people that understand you. And, uh, and that then even if they don't have the answers, um, they can still listen and encourage you and pray for you. And, and be there for you. Absolutely. But, but but this is even great. Maybe, maybe people are listening going, well, I feel okay, but maybe it's a good thing to be a little more sensitive to and aware of those around us that might at some point ask us for help. And, and what advice would you have for, for them? If somebody asks you uh, for help and you don't have the answers, what can we do? Well, I think, I think a lot of times people, when they ask for help, they're really wanting somebody to talk to, right? Mm-hmm. Or somebody to listen to them. So you don't have to have the answers. You know, you could say to them, gosh, I hear I hear the pain you're going mm-hmm. through. I, you know, I want to help you. Let's see what we can do together to mm-hmm. find the help that you need. Okay. Kind of grab them by the hand, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. And walk with them through that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good. And remember the courage that it took for them to come to you and ask for yeah. help, right? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, we've, we've talked about all of the barriers that right. that stop us from asking for help. So it does take, for some people, it takes a lot of courage to get to that point when they're yeah. ready to to ask and, and receive help from other people. That's really good. Well, thanks for sharing with us, Stacy, And uh, we're proud of what you're doing with your career Thank and you. helping all the people you help. And uh, if somebody's out there and they want to get a hold of you, what would be the best way for them to do that? Probably by email. Okay. Um, my email address is Stacy S T A C Y L Allen A L L E N fourteen at gmail dot com. Okay. Stacy L Allen fourteen at gmail dot com. Yep. Great. All right. Well, thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Midweek Motivation. To make sure you don't miss any content in the future, please subscribe, share, and if you enjoyed this, give us a like and consider popping by a Westside service some weekend. You can find out more at westsidecommunitychurch.com.